Hello viewers, welcome to this episode of Healthy India. Uh, today we'll talk about one of the most common problems uh, that all of us face in our lifetime, uh, in fact, often quite frequently. And that is the problem of headache. Now, one study showed that 75% of Americans had a headache in the last one year, significant headache. We also know that all of us have had headaches at some point or the other. And we do realize it's a very important reason for employees missing work, for people not being able to go to work. So it, it is not just a headache. It can actually affect productivity of an organization or, or a company or the, even the government. So uh, to address various aspects of headaches, because there are many, many types of headache, and not all of them are the same. Some are very benign and require very little intervention. Some are very significant and may be heralding the onset of something very major or a major ne neurological condition. So we need to be able to distinguish between these various kinds of headache. And therefore, to discuss all about headaches for all of you to help you manage, identify headaches and seek treatment when necessary, I have two experts with me in the studio today. We have Dr. Achal Srivastav from the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. He is a professor of neurology there. And we have Dr. Raj Shekhar Reddy, who is director of neurology at the Max Healthcare Saket. So welcome to the show, gentlemen. Uh, I'll start with you, Dr. Srivastav. So as I said, you know, headaches means a, could mean a lot of things. Many different things could be something very benign, very sin, sinister, but also headaches are not one. They could be occurring here or here or the head, anywhere. So what are the types of headaches and what are the common causes, common types of headaches? Yeah. See, um, there are more than 200 causes of headache. 200 kinds. More there than more 200, 200 causes kinds of, of headache. headache. So uh, what people have done, they have tried to divide into groups. So first, what they did was they made a division of primary and secondary headache. So once we talk about primary headache, that means there is nothing inside the brain which is responsible for headache. No cause which is responsible for headache, but patient is having headache. Right? That is primary headache. Like there is no tumor, for example. Then uh, we have secondary headaches. Again, which is a big list. I told you that tumor will be one cause and there are n number of other causes which we'll be keep on discussing. So first is primary headache, then primary headache we have been uh, again asked to divide into two. One will be episodic primary headache and continuous type primary headache. So episodic headaches, then uh, then there is another type of group one should may, one may call. Uh, like or we may say causes of primary headache. So one will be of course migraine, which is again of two types, mainly two types I will say. Uh, migraine with aura and without aura. Then we have cluster headache. Then we have a tension headache. Then there are several other headaches which may also qualify to come into primary headache. But these three are main causes of primary headache. So again secondary headache, uh, there are various causes which may include tumor, which may include meningitis, which may include uh, some kind of venous sinus thrombosis, IIH, some raised pressure. And sometimes other areas may be responsible for secondary causes of headache, like maybe eye is responsible, patient is having glycoma, some something inside your ear. But there are several other causes which may be responsible for headache. So that will be secondary headache. So primary headache, there are three main causes. So so when we talk of, of secondary headaches, like so how do we, you know, decide that this could be primary, this could be secondary? How do we do that? Yes, as I said. The theme is that primary headache will not have something inside the brain which would be but how responsible. Would we know that? Yeah, that's what. Yeah. That's what. So that that is the patient cannot decide that. There are several parameters which tell you. There are several indicators. I would I so can that say. So the, the doctor will when you talk yes. to the doctor. Yes. Once you reach the doctor, doctor mm. will ask questions yes. and then he will be able to diagnose whether it is primary or secondary headache. So, uh, Doctor Reddy, uh, one of the most important causes of primary headaches, as Dr. Srivastav said, is migraine. Right. And right. we always, mm. uh, you know, people use mm. the word very loosely, vascular headache, migraine, I've got migraine. And, you know, as a non-neurologist, as an endocrinologist, I'm always confused in myopedy 
whether my patient is does he actually or does she actually have migraine so how do you how do you identify migraine and why is it important to identify it right so uh, i think that's a very important thing you asked dr mithil so when dr like dr shivastav you were saying when you divide primary headaches and secondary headaches so just to put it broadly primary headaches think of it as a big group in which migraine is the commonest cause now you have i would say you look at all motor vehicles and in motor vehicles you have scooters so there could be other motor vehicles which are there in that big group such as for example a car or a bus or a truck they all have wheels they all have engines but the commonest motor vehicle is a scooter so migraine is the commonest type of primary headache disorder now when i say what is migraine migraine is basically an interplay between your genes and the environment if you have a genetic predisposition to have a headache so let us say my mother also gets headache or my father gets a headache when they don't eat their meals on time or they've not slept or they've gone out in the sun they start getting a headache once let's say once in a month that could qualify as a migraine now the typical features of migraine are that a person would have headaches which usually last for up to about 4 hours and sometimes as long as 3 days they have a sensation of a throbbing sensation in the head light and sound irritate them this is called sonophotophobia they may get nausea when they walk they every step there's a jarring pain in the head they want to switch off the lights of the room and go to sleep in a quiet room now these are the typical features that one has when one has a migraine and normally when we look at people who've come with these complaints we try and see how often they're having this problem so if they're having this let's say once a month and they clearly identify a trigger for that then we tell them the best thing to do is to try and avoid that trigger and nothing else needs to be done but if these headaches start increasing in frequency then we need to address the problem a little more aggressively maybe consider some medications and just to put it just here quickly i will tell you that there are even migraines are divided into four types the first is what is called a low frequency episodic migraine in which you have headaches from 1 to 3 days a month 4 to 7 days is called a moderate frequency episodic migraine 8 to 14 days is called a high frequency episodic migraine and if you have headaches more than 15 days a month then we call it chronic migraine so just broadly this is what migraine is but even that's a lot because if people are getting you know 3 days a month if they get a serious migraine type of headache it it may inhibit their carrying out their day to day activities may not allow them to go to work so quite clearly uh, migraine is a serious condition it's a common condition it's doesn't usually have very serious connotations sometimes can but uh, the fact is that it does require management and we'll come back to that uh, in a bit the other very common variety of headache dr shivastav is what people say मुझको टेंशन है डेक होता है मैं पेशेंट्स कहते हैं सब बहुत स्ट्रेस से बहुत सिर मेरा दर्द करता है और वो सब मिक्सअप हो गया टेंशन हेडेक स्ट्रेस रिलेटेड हेडेक ये सब क्या एक ही होता है और दे डिफरेंट वैराइटीज इन दिस एक्चुअली वो सही कहते हैं कि टेंशन से हो गया तो टेंशन इज ए बिग प्रेसिपिटेंट ऑफ टेंशन टाइप हेडेक बहुत बड़ा प्रेसिपिटेंट है और इट इज डायग्नोज लाइक पीपल विल हैव कीप ऑन हैविंग माइल्ड टू टाइप ऑफ हेडेक persistent type headache lasting for hours maybe days and of course as you rightly said the mujhe tension ho gaya aur headache ho gaya actually mein yahi hota there is some kind of tension trigger it may be some demise in the family it may be pressure of exam it may be some lecture tomorrow and today they have developed there are these kinds of precipitants are there so it is for us it is easy to diagnose in terms of that there is some precipitant in tension type precipitant one is that people may not have a good sleep so if there is an issue of because of some anxiety tension people are not getting sleep so that is again one clue which tells us that patient may be having tension type headache and there are other things the location of headache mostly people will say like some something like band like thing yeah. that yes some band is uh, around their head so it is a feeling which is descri- which is described by patients and isi se hum log samajh lete hain ki shayad ye tension type headache hai aur usme approach se farak hoti hogi na tension headache ka treatment approach bilkul bilkul alag, bilkul, bilkul alag hai kyunki jaisa abhi uh, dr ashikhan ne bataya migraine ke bare mein 
कि किस तरह से उसके प्रेसिपिडेंट्स उसके ट्रिगर फैक्टर्स बहुत सारे हैं अलग हैं इसमें बड़ा क्लियर कट प्रेसिपिडेंट होगा ट्रिगर फैक्टर होगा कि अक्सर कोई ना कोई बात की टेंशन हो उसके प्रेसिपिडेंट बड़े अजीब से हो सकते हैं जैसे कि को, कोई आ, किसी को परफ्यूम से ही हो सकता है कि उनको माइग्रेन सीडेक प्रेसिपिडेंट हो जाए उसमें और भी चीज़ें हैं जैसे कि आप किन्नी अन्य कारणों से सो नहीं पाए नींद में डिस्टर्बेंस चल रहा है खाली पेट रह जाना यात्रा करना कई लोगों का ये इस तरह के प्रेसिपिडेंट दीज काइंड ऑफ प्रेसिपिडेंट्स आर देयर फॉर माइग्रेन सो वन क्वेश्चन टू डॉक्टर रेडी बिफोर वी गो फॉर द ब्रेक इज हाउ डज एज अ पेशेंट अ व्यूअर रियली अ कीन टू नो दिस ये मैं कैसे जानूं कि अब हेड मेरा ये मेजर है क्योंकि हेड तो रोज ही होता है लोग को अक्सर होता है और हर बार लोग सोचते हैं कि अब मैं हर चीज़ के लिए अगर भागेंगे न्यूरोलॉजिस्ट के पास और हर चीज़ के लिए एम आर कराएंगे तो ये एक तो बहुत बड़ा चक्र हो जाएगा सो हाउ शुड एज अ पेशेंट वी आइडेंटिफाई सो अगेन वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स दैट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट हेड एक्स इज दैट आई टेल माई पेशेंट कि अगर आपको बहुत लम बहुत सालों से हेड हो रहा है देन यू आर लेस लाइकली टू हैव अ सीरियस कॉज सो आई ऑफन टेल दैम दैट if you've had headaches going on for 20 years even if though the headaches are bothersome the, they're not allowed to you, the, during that headache they're not able to work they're not able to go to school it can be very disturbing but the longer one has a headache i'm not saying that it is not troubling you i'm saying that it is less likely to be a serious cause so if a person has a sudden severe new onset headache or a change in character of headache or with a headache they develop some neurological symptoms such as let's say a decrease in vision or a weakness in your arm or your leg or these headaches have suddenly become such that they are increasing steadily they are waking you up at night you're getting up in the morning with a severe headache you're vomiting mm. these are all signs that there is a sinister cause that must be ruled out now even with these symptoms one may not have a sinister cause but these are red flags for headache and you must get that evaluated immediately on the other hand i am not saying that headaches that are going on for many years are also things that should be ignored so when you have a headache going on for many many years sometimes these headaches can transform into more severe types of headaches so for instance if i have a migraine that happens once a month and if i don't take care of it appropriately it becomes twice a month then it becomes once a week and then it becomes twice a week mm-hmm. and then slowly goes on to become 15 days a month and then even as little as 3 days of headache a month if you look at it in a 12 week 12 month period 12 into 3 is 36 days, days so if you're not allowed to go to work yeah, for 36 yeah, yeah, days it's yeah. a lot of uh, so it's important to identify the causes i think these red flags that i mentioned are important at the same time i'm emphasizing that it is important to also address less frequent and long duration headaches appropriately so that it does not transform into a more troublesome Major. variety of headache thank you dr reddy Uh, we'll take a short break and be back with you soon with more information about headaches Welcome back after the break, and I come to you, Dr. Shivastav. So you know, supposing someone gets frequent headaches, they are not terrible. We know that it's not sinister. There are no red flags, as Dr. Reddy describes. So what should what should we do? I mean, you know, someone needs to get relief from their headache, and people do all kinds of things. Some of them just pop pills like all the time. I have some patients uh, in endocrinology who, because of their headaches, are just popping pills, painkillers, you know, all the time. Some of them. also i think are become dependent on painkillers uh, for their headaches so what should a average person do when he gets a regular headache which everyone can get from time to time uh, yeah uh, see uh, what i used to tell the patients is that whenever the headache is disturbing your daily work whatever kind of work you are doing doing if it is disturbing you you must consult a physician you must consult a rather neuro physician i will say so uh, in that scenario once the patient has come to you or like viewers who are there uh, in front of tv today uh, like they what they must do it again depends on the severity of headache how severe is the headache whether it is first headache first time headache developed 
or they are having a headache for many years and off and on it is happening and now today it is very much severe or something like that. these kinds of scenario or yesterday they were not able to sleep properly now today they are he is having headache there are various kinds of thing sudden stress now today there is headache so these are the things which just need some some painkiller and some painkiller i will suggest that people should use paracetamol or acetaminophen or sometimes naproxen also but we must consult doctor for that paracetamol is very easy they can always use some 500 mg or 650 mg tablet that is the usually prescribed medication usually taken medication even i will say uh, just they go to the shop and buy one strip of paracetamol you can get it over the counter yeah, also over the counter yeah, doesn't yeah, require yeah, any yeah. permissions or any kind yeah, of prescriptions yeah. for that but at the same time when it is disturbing one headache is all right but if it is disturbing your work you must consult doctor then doctor will do what will do he will take your whole history where it is situated how frequent it is what are the precipitants whether the patient needs any investigation in the form of mri or ct scan after all these things if the doctor decides that it's a primary headache it may not require a ct scan or mri then he may put you depending on again the the frequency and severity he may put you on some prophylactic drugs so prophylactic drugs are meant for reducing the number of attacks the and also the severity kam ho jayega jaldi jaldi nahi hoga aaram se rahenge bachao ke liye wo dawai le sakte hain ha prophylaxis so these are medis, medical treatment with dawai ke alawa dawai ke alawa there are several other non medical options hmm. so non medical treatment when we talk of non medical treatment then there are precipitants we talked about precipitants specifically for migraine dr shekhar told you migraine there are precipitants so so you must identify those precipitants list them and try to find out a way out like i'll give you an example of very common precipitant is you have not taken food for many hours so you develop headache so this the treatment is very easy take food so there are people who have headache once they go go out into sun, yes, sun. yes absolutely i know many like that yes so the way out would be yes. to avoid sunlight yes. how to avoid don't go unnecessarily out mm. number 1 number 2 if you have to go out you can use black glasses you can use yeah. uh, umbrella yeah. or even hat for that purpose yeah. so once migraine is there i say that it will be there throughout your life so you have to identify the precipitants and try to minimize them by your actions by your common sense use your common sense you don't need a doctor for that you have identified the precipitant try to act on that so in fact the two examples you gave are, are, are the, perhaps the commonest you know people miss their meal or they don't sleep well or they suddenly go in the sun you know exactly, the temperature difference these days is very high between an air conditioned environment and the outside temperature often above 40 so then they do get headache so fantastic one should try and avoid use common sense as you would do for anything like we say in diets if a particular thing does not suit you why don't do you have to keep trying that uh-huh. so don't don't do that so yes. that's that's very sensible advice uh, what about other causes dr reddy i mean you know uh, eye disorders as doctor mentioned can cause headache uh, some other disorders sometimes ent it can cause headache so what are these problems i think uh, one must remember that though i and ent disorders can cause headache they are not a very common cause of headache so there's a misconception that if i have a headache there's something wrong with my eyes i should get my eyes checked out now you could get it checked out but understand that being told that your power of your eye is slightly not right is usually not a cause of headache so i would imagine that the importance here is to rule out glaucoma in a given set of patients in that age group who have a family history of glaucoma for them you would like to consider ophthalmological causes of headache so to speak the other thing is that whenever you see a doctor such as a neurologist he will examine your eyes to look at the fundus of the eye to look at something called the disc and that can reflect pressure inside the eye i think these are the two important eye things for me as far as i am concerned as a neurologist and i certainly wouldn't want to give people the impression that normally eye problems tend to cause headache it's a rare cause as is with ent causes sinusitis is not the commonest cause of headache by a far stretch and if you do a ct scan or a sinus x ray for anybody some degree of sinusitis is seen in everybody so one must take a history very carefully and only if the history suggests 
let's say a very pointed pain in a particular area of the head where constantly you have pain and you see that the sinuses are very blocked on a on an x-ray one would like to attribute that to sinusitis routinely these are incidental pickups that we get while we do tests and i don't certainly don't want to give a message here that sinusitis or eye problems are common cause of headache most patients have migraine and they go to doctors who sometimes misinterpret this as an eye problem ent problem that's the message i want to give today so also i think in, in the case of eye and ent problems if you any good physician will see you they'll be able to tell you you know you would be having some issues with your sinus or often some issues with your eyes otherwise it's not that randomly presenting only as headache Uh, is unusual except for glaucoma of course but Absolutely. again again there also you would probably have some signs so a good physician should be able to triage that to filter that out whether whether you go into that category of uh, of of eye or ent versus uh, the more common migraine headaches I, i think that's absolutely correct i think if the person give the history very typical of migraines has been going on for many many years all the you know precipitating factors that we spoke about earlier and in spite of that has a little bit of sinusitis i would still consider that patient to have a migraine rather than a sinusitis uh, we come back to you dr shivastav and you were talking little bit of of how non medically we can manage headaches yes so okay so there are so many of our patients who have recurring headaches that are not serious but they are bothersome what lifestyle changes can we make to avoid recurrent headaches especially migraine uh, you know with serious more serious migraine you would have to be on prophylactic medication but what about lifestyle changes that will help us avoid these so for that we'll have to go into the list of precipitants yes. which we discussed earlier yes. so a uh, commonest out of them was i told you that going to sunlight or uh, uh, remaining empty stomach for fast purpose or something like that or or maybe because there was no food in the house they could not go out to have food or something like that or doctors who yeah. are who are busy <laughs> who are busy yes, working of not course. uncommon to miss right. lunch sure, or continued for many yes, hours absolutely. and then yes. you could not have food yes so, so these are the, the common precipitants which produce headache sleep disturbance hmm. of whatever reason hmm. you travel traveled from one place to other place in the night and you could not sleep your flight arrived at 3:45 pm in the morning you could not get a sleep so these causes are there which which uh, may be modified by your actions like you can avoid them or you can take a flight which is so so, so one is avoiding daytime. triggers yeah. right yeah so otherwise so anything else other, so again those triggers need to be acted upon yes yes so one is sleep very important portion is sleep so you have to have a good sleep and continuous sleep don't change the sleep timings on regular basis you have to sleep at 30 11 or something like that get up at 6 mm. make it a habit unless forced upon by some very untoward thing otherwise i will suggest that sleep has to be uh, uh, has to be i call it nidra ka niyaman bahut zaruri and it doesn't just uh, help you in headache there are several other reasons where it helps yeah, right. one is yeah. one is of course sleep yeah. the other is that some degree of uh, regular exercises exercise regular exercise very very important So again, not going into very stressful exercise that may produce headache, mm. but a regular exercise, time-bound exercise, must do daily at at the same time. That will help you. Then, certain degree of uh, meditation techniques yeah. where people are having tension type headache. So They, meditation, not just medication. Meditation ah, is yes, what of course, not only medication. Saying, yeah. Biofeedback techniques yes, are there. Yes. So those those things may be done to avoid. the occurrence of headaches are Fantastic. this will reduce the number of headaches this will reduce the severity of headache some people do yoga yes. there are various studies which have shown effect yes. of yoga breathing and on uh, you know deep, deep breathing exercises yes, yes, so yes, those yes. things are there which will help great uh, last question dr reddy running out of time desperately but there are a lot of advances i know uh, how migraine is treated now than what it was when i did my neurology rounds uh, <laughs> uh, what 30 years ago so 35 years ago so 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 what has changed in neuro, in migraine treatment right so uh, you know when we look at the conventional therapies that we've had so far like dr achal so nicely told us there are basically three things acute treatments which are treatments when you what you take when you get an attack preventive treatment which are basically prophylactic therapies this you give to people who have a certain number of headaches per month and the third is avoidance of all precipitating factors and maintaining a good lifestyle like dr achal said 
adequate sleep, adequate meals, adequate exercise, limiting your caffeine intake, making sure you're not taking energy drinks at all times or you're not doing too much of that. So all these things are part of the conventional therapies. Now, in spite of that, there are many people who are not adequately controlled with these modalities of therapy. So we have certain newer therapies which are more specific and targeted clearly only towards people with migraines. So one of, I'm, I'm going to list about three or four of them. The first is something Just to called... enumerate for the yeah, audience. Sure. Yeah, sure. So, so the first is Botox, botulinum toxin. Now botulinum toxin has been a part of migraine prophylactic or preventive therapy for the last 10 years. It was approved in 2012 and it is strictly used for people who have more than 15 headache days per month for three months or more and also for a group of patients who have something called medication overuse headache. Some people who take too many of these painkillers over a period of time start getting headaches as a result of these painkillers. So this group of patients who have more than 15 headache days a month for any three months of a calendar year or any 12 months they are they qualify for this therapy and it's been seen when you give this therapy at least 70 percent of these patients will get at least 50 percent relief so it's not a magical cure you don't give this and everybody becomes all right but to go down from let's say 15 headaches a month to five or six headaches a month is also a great relief to many patients so botox is one botox yes. is uh, the therapy for this the second is a newer group of medications which are, so the older medications that we use for migraine were actually repurposed drugs. We've used blood pressure medication, yes. certain antidepressants, yes. certain other calcium channel blockers which were used in migraine preventive medication. Now we have slightly more specific agents. These are called monoclonal antibodies. Now there's a group of monoclonal antibodies, four of them now which have been approved worldwide. One of them is available in our country also. And these are injections that are given either once a month or once every three months depending on which one you're choosing. They are also very good and in Europe and in the US have now been approved for headaches as little as four to seven days a month. So, so, so you know, you've all heard monoclonal antibody Dr. Adi is talking about in the context of COVID, right? So you imagine, I mean, of course, there are different antibodies, but the fact is, imagine the, the way science has progressed, that these monoclonal antibodies actually are used for a wide variety of conditions, different kinds of arthritis, sometimes in in cancer, we discussed that the other day. Uh, in COVID, you, you all heard about it and even in migraine. Absolutely. So, so that's the newer advancement. So, so Botox, monoclonal antibody. And we have certain therapies that are now targeting something called a CGRP, which is a calcitonin gene related peptide. Now, monoclonal antibodies also mm -hmm. target this, mm -hmm. but there's a group of medications which actually target this and are used as an acute SOS and certain devices. Now, these devices are used for preventing migraine and, you know, you have these devices, they're, they're different names. I don't want to go into the details of that, but these usually are external stimulating devices. There's something called Kefali, there's something called Gamma Core. So, all these devices are now approved and I think that these are slowly, slowly, they will come into the mainstream. I think that people have gotten good experience with these, with these agents, with these newer therapies. And I think in the future, we will have better options for our patients is what I'm hoping. That's uh, fascinating to learn about these new techniques. And I hope our viewers gained from this discussion. Thank you very much as we come to the end of this episode of Healthy India.